Knuckles Comic Issue 30. I start out already disinterested as I see a human holding a briefcase with guns in it, and he uses one to shoot a bird for no reason. Then we see on top of the Eastern Hemisphere is Mount Kopianjaro, a purple gorilla with a red lasso, who throws it up to Angel Island and gets up to it. Well, that's certainly a creative way to get to the island. We then see a wall of text on the island's soil wasting time when we could have just seen him climb up the island's bottom with narration in the bottom of the panel. The gorilla, named Monk unfortunately, brags about being back home to the island and vows vengeance on Knuckles for some reason. Then it's intriguingly revealed that over a thousand years ago, the Echidnas were a race of space explorers looking to research far off worlds like Saturn and Europa. So in a very different galaxy from our galaxy, they still have planets with the exact same names. Well, Europe was a moon. So, yeah, space exploration. Why the hell did that have to stop? I mean, I guess that does fall under the technology ban. So, that falls under the technology ban, but not a limo for a high council candidate? We learned this because Knuckles is reading a book his dad gave him, which also says that the technology of the Kindness was even more advanced back then. Naturally, since this was before technology ban brought them into a dark age, so, now that they're in the Dark Age, they have to hide technology and stop doing research and stuff. Knuckles then says that the names of the Echidnas were weird, saying, Whoever heard of an Echidna named Dave? Makes sense he'd think that considering the kinds of names we've seen here. I wonder why they used to have normal names. He wonders what happened to the monolith, whatever that is, but then gets interrupted by the sound of squawking from that same cat weasel bird from last issue who tells him in a panic that a bird he knows got killed off at the North End. I thought that was just a normal bird. Knuckles gets hit by a thrown rock while gliding, but what turns out to be his childhood bully. Because Knuckles had a childhood bully. Knuckles. A guy who literally has the word Knuckles for a name. The most powerful Echidna Guardian in the world, who can literally create a random portal home or surround himself with nuclear energy he's immune to by accident. That Knuckles had a childhood bully. Bullshit. They're really running low on ideas. Monk then looks at Knuckles and remembers and remembers the instant that he found himself jolted from his sleep unable to move his limbs as robed figures from the Brotherhood threw him off the edge of the island, which sadly didn't kill him. Good to see a bully getting what he deserves for once, even if he deserved more. It's a refreshing change of pace seeing authority figures actually dealing with a bully for the main character. Which really shows how much they love him. The two of them start fighting, although for some reason Knuckles wastes time trying to convince him to talk it out and saying that he'll never make friends and influence people the way he acts. Even though it really should be Knuckles who is the quick to violence hothead. So why is he talking like this? Without that personality trait, is he even really Knuckles anymore? He's not really a loner, since he likes hanging out with all his friends. He doesn't spend all day sitting in front of the Master Emerald. All he's got left is being serious and badass. He's not even really an idiot, just occasionally ditzy. After they fight again, it turns out the human who shot the bird for no reason is showing up. Oh, at first I thought that this was some crazy situation where the ape wasn't really an ape, but a human supervillain from that superhero crossover who transformed himself into an ape, and that he was the one who shot the bird, but fortunately it's much less convoluted than that. It's just a regular human, I guess. Meanwhile, Julie shows up at the Chaotix with Ray while riding her demonic white horse again in the next story, asking where Knuckles is. Ray was recently saved by Mighty and was brought back here yesterday. Wait, are you fucking kidding me? The Knuckles comics started having backup stories now and I missed out on them? I never had those before. When I first read this and wrote this review, I hadn't read those fucking stories. Not having backup stories that wouldn't be included in the video was part of what I liked about the Knuckles comic. After that, because of this I had to go back and research all the issues I read to make sure I didn't miss anything. Ray may have a terrible design, but he at least has a personality, as he immediately shows shyness by stuttering, and says that Mighty's the closest he has to family these days. Why would he think Julie's the kindergarten when she's a girl? Did he never hear any male pronouns being used when Knuckles was being talked about? Mighty says that he wants Ray to check out Kinopolis, and Espio takes a ride with Julie because he's got nothing else to do, and the two over an hour later lampshade how Knuckles doesn't at least tell his friends where he can be found when he takes off. 
what, it's supposed to call each and every single one of them on a cell phone every time something interesting happens? Espio then stops the horse from being able to see a chameleon that doesn't look so good, and all he could do is mutter about a gun, so vaguely as if he's never seen one before, being totally unhelpful to them, and Julie agrees to take him to the med center. Then some more chameleons come out after Espio reveals that they bitch at him for hanging out with non-chameleons, and one of them complains about his taste in friends for bringing a female echidna with him. Well, I completely fucking hate these guys already. How nice. Espio then is told that someone wants to see him, which turns out to be Valdez, who is roboticized since he was left behind. Huh. Sadly, the issue ends there to continue into a story arc, when I have been desperate for the first story to wrap up as soon as possible. This whole issue is by Ken Penders. Yeah, I didn't really like this one, mainly because I had the feeling that this human was the same evil scientist guy from the dumb superhero comic crossover who implied that he had already met Knuckles once, and I didn't really want to see him again. But also because the whole premise of Knuckles having had a bully is just stupid. He's too much of a badass for that. If anything, he'd be the bully if he was evil enough. I at least love the idea that the Brotherhood actually tries to do something about the bully by throwing him off the island, giving him his just desserts for disrespecting their guardian. But this whole story was just tedious to me. Not much to say about the other story, I... Espio met Valdez, which could have been cut to in the second story of this story arc. And I hate the racist chameleons. <laughs>